for swung timing, we take out the E and of it. So we erase this here. So we now have this right here. It lasts for the amount of time that these do. Hello and welcome to another zany episode of Nerdy West Coast Swing, the podcast with pixels where the anchors are out of this world and the points don't matter. We're here to help train your eyes so you can learn faster and dance better. I'm Cassie Winter. I'm Alicia Marshall. If you're wondering who are we to be analyzing these pros, Cassie and I both have extensive training and experience in both partnered and solo dancing. She has about 22 years and I have about 24. Tonight, we are talking about swing timing. <laughs> because I felt like this was very necessary to talk about. Um, <laughs> and I thoroughly agreed. Getting back into things, you know, got to have a nice refresher. Uh, tonight's going to be a little bit different uh, in terms of the way that we go about things. We do have two videos we're looking at, but uh, we're going to do that a little bit later. I actually first am going to break down swung time and uh, I'm going to share my screen to do that. For those that don't know, I've been a musician and a singer for most of my life. So uh, I felt like it'd probably be appropriate for me to break things down a little bit more visually, actually, because I feel like a lot of times when we get taught swung timing, it's, it's very, you know, like somebody's telling us about it, which for some people is fine, but not for everyone. And I think it's just easier to kind of see it written out as if you were reading music. So that's what I'm going to do. To Alicia's screen share. Doodly doodly doodly. This is basically what sheet music looks like. These are measures and or bars. Technically, this one section here is a measure. Technically, this whole section is a bar. However, a lot of times you will hear it be uh, back and forth. Like people will also call this section a bar of music even though it's not necessarily. Generally, as dancers, we count in eights, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And that's a full eight count. And generally with music, we count in uh, four count measures. So <clears throat> if we break that down, it looks like this. So then we have one, two, three, four and that's technically one measure but for dancers we go five six seven eight okay so for phrasing generally there are two different ways that we can do phrasing one is for like more contemporary songs and the other is for uh, blue songs for contemporary songs uh, generally we'll use it's uh, four eight counts that is one phrase. So four of these is one phrase. With blues, it's different. Um, with blues, we use six eight counts for a phrase. And uh, sometimes you'll hear that being called 12 bar blues. Um, I know I've heard Royston say it before, but um, and Parker, but that's the actual name for it, even though dancers, because we use eight counts instead of four counts, it's six instead of 12. Just wanted to mention that because it is kind of confusing if you don't totally know the difference there. Now, for general counting, we use quarter notes, right? So for each count, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, All right? So we have one note for each section here, four for each measure. And that's a quarter note. Now, for anything other than that, we break these into different pieces. So for straight timing, all right, so that's our normal like one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So we break these into half. We now have two for each count. This would be counted as one and, two and, three and, four and. This is um, what we use for straight timing is these eighth notes. Now, um, for a normal six count pattern, it looks a little bit different. 
we would have one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So that is our normal six count straight timing. That's what it looks like. Now, if we go into swung timing, that's different. So rather than having each note or each beat broken into half, we're breaking it down into four pieces each. So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just pretend those are evenly spaced. <laughs> Close enough. Okay. If you hear somebody count swung time, it is like one, a two, three, a four. Let's break that down here. So for these, we count it one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So that's how you count it. Now, for swung timing, we take out the E and of it. So we erase this here. So we now have this right here. It lasts for the amount of time that these do, okay? So then when we're counting it, when we're counting it, we get one, a two, three, a four, right? So we have these right here kind of come right in succession, like pretty quickly, right next to each other. That is how it is broken down. However, because uh, if we were to count a regular six count in swung, swung timing, so we would have one, two, three, uh, four, five, mm, mm, too close, five, uh, six. So you can see how we have still two notes here, but in between, there's still space for two more, right? If we count this out now, this would be one, two, three, uh, four, five, uh, six. I want to mention that when we're dancing swung time, there are certain places where there is an emphasis, and that would be on our four and our six. And that is because uh, we have these whole longer notes in between some shorter notes here, right? So that's going to create an emphasis naturally because it's just longer. Now what happens on these two notes is where a delayed like hip swing happens. We'll probably talk about that a little bit more um, once we get into our videos, but just so you're aware, in just like a regular six count pattern, the delayed swing would be here and here. What I went ahead and did is uh, a similar thing that we've been doing inside Patreon. And what Alicia just showed is something we've been doing inside our uh, Patreon as well. But I um, animate to the music. And mine's really simple. On the left, you're going to see the swung timing, a one, a two, a three, a four. So you can see the timing difference between the, the note and the uh. And then on the right, you'll see it in straight timing. But it's going to be animated to a swung timing song. So hopefully it'll be really clear visually to you that the one on the left is correct and in sync with the song, whereas the one on the right is off. Go ahead and give it a watch and it can be helpful to actually like cover up one half of it, watch it, and then cover up the other half, watch it, and then release the kraken of thine hands and you can see how painful the straight timing on the right is. <laughs> <laughs> in the comments the red was so gross yes yes sir yes and that is what we see when we see these innocent dancers wanting to dance well but dancing straight timing to swung timing music you can see it just <laughs> doesn't quite look right oh, another commenter i'm actually having a physical reaction i'm straight up about to throw up yes 
<laughs> yes. Um, and for those of you, if this is perchance your first time encountering the difference between straight timing and swung timing, it's really important to understand that in West Coast Swing, you can dance straight timing to straight timing songs, that's fine. If a swung timing song comes on, you must thou shalt dance swung time or I shall find thee. No, I'm joking. But what's really interesting is in West Coast Swing, you can, you can dance swung timing to a straight timing song and it still looks great. And actually it can be really helpful. It can save you energy and help you stay in integrity with West Coast Swing. So you can't dance straight timing to everything, but you can dance swung timing to everything. Yeah. Mwahaha. Basically, uh, my most used application for swung time is fast songs. Yeah. Like, Same. Doesn't matter. Contemporary blues. Any fast song. I'm using swing timing because you don't have to fully transfer the weight like you would for straight timing. Mm -hmm. So because straight timing, it's, you know, equal each section of it um, and the swung timing, it has a longer section and then a shorter section. Because of that, you'll be able to do one full weight transfer and then the other part of it, you won't actually have to do a weight transfer. It's more like a foot place, slight weight, and move off, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a lot easier um, to not have to do full weight transfers for yep. fast song. Yeah. So. Now that you've, uh, you really understand the swing timing for that song, we're actually going to watch yep. John Lindo and uh, Melissa Roots dance to that song. There are two dances in this video. Just watch the first one, which is that song. And when you're done, come back and let us know. To the screen share. Doodly doodly doodly. So hopefully now that we've done that rather in-depth explanation of the difference between straight timing and swung timing, watching this video, you can see the really clear pulse and the differentiation in timing that swung timing rhythm brings to West Coast Swing. Because this is a slow blues, um, it's very, very grounded um, and very relaxed. Uh, faster blues tends to be a little bit less grounded just because of the footwork aspect to blues music. Mm -hmm. So um, that's something that you'll notice in the difference between this particular video and then the next one that we watch, which will also be Melissa, but it's Melissa and Ben. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you'll notice that this one looks very grounded and very relaxed. Now, something that you'll notice with this particular dance is that um, they aren't using that swung time like the whole time in terms of like um, every movement that they're doing isn't like you can't see that swung timing to it, but they're still moving with the swung time. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, it's most clear when they're engaging in triple steps. Mm -hmm. um, but even when they're dancing to the, the quarter notes and not breaking things up into any sort of triple rhythm, there's still that delay, quick, quick, delay, quick, quick. Mm -hmm. So there's, and that's really strong pulsing. Yeah. There's a differentiation in the timing instead of it just being consistent all the way through. Mm -hmm. And we have three, uh, four. And you'll notice here that this step is quite a bit longer than that first one. And then the one following it. And so literally what's happening with swung rhythm is you are getting to spend more time in counts four and six of a six count pattern. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you blaze through those moments in your dancing, you're not dancing to the swung rhythm. Right. Um, and that's because of what I showed earlier is that that four and that six, those are quarter notes. So there's a whole beats that you mm -hmm. need to have. You can see with this triple right here, um, just the difference. It's not even timing for each step that Melissa is taking specifically. Mm -hmm. Now, I also want to point out that you can't even necessarily see her feet, but you can see it in the rest of her body. 
right? Mm -hmm. So her feet right here disappear, but you can still see she's taking that step and then she's allowing the steps to move through the rest of her body. And it's all kind of working together. Um, one thing that I tend to see um, in newer dancers or people that maybe don't have a full grasp um, on like blues technique and swung timing is that the strike of the feet will be correct, but the rest of the body won't move with it. Mm -hmm. So there's a disconnect and it still makes you look like you are not on time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, even if your feet are technically striking at the correct time. If the rest of your body isn't following through with that properly, it doesn't look like it. If you aren't letting it follow through, it's going to look like you're dancing straight timing still. Mm -hmm. Because you can't see that strong, clear pulse. I know we um, went into really great detail on delayed swing of the hips on our episode where we analyzed Thomas Carter and Jen DeLuca. Yeah, we did. Uh, so I will link to that um, in the replay because that's also a really important element for the delayed timing of your follow through over your weight transfers. Um, Andrew said, would that be a case of being off time or off rhythm? I would say yes, but I know, I feel like the term off rhythm is one of those terms in west coast swing that different people use differently mm -hmm. um he said foot strike without the body action so yeah. the rhythm is uh more so just different pieces that you're hearing in the music um and it's not a super consistent from one beat to the next thing mm -hmm. so i get what you mean yes it would kind of be off rhythm like it could possibly be um, if they were trying to use a more rhythmic um, movement but uh, generally I would say that it's harder to be off rhythm I guess um, yeah when I think of off rhythm um, I think of dancers who just are blatantly not getting the point of a song mm -hmm. and if you were to turn off the music and just watch them you would have no idea what style of music they were dancing to mm -hmm. um but again that's just how i understand that term personally mm -hmm. and different people use it differently right one thing i want to add before i forget because there are a few songs in west coast swing that you will get either socially or in a competition that have the tone of a swung rhythm song and yet they're technically straight rhythm mm -hmm. which breaks my brain i'm not a dj so i don't remember what those songs are called um but i know they do exist <laughs> but that's where the brilliance of you can dance swung rhythm to any song comes in so you will still be fine dancing a swung rhythm to a song that feels like it should be swung, even though it's straight. Those are rare occurrences, but they do happen and you'll notice them when they happen. It'll feel weird. No, you're not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that you can really see with Melissa is how smooth the movement that she's doing is. Um, another thing other than, um, just like the foot strike and the body movement, not being at the same time or like not being just like a follow through, um, is that things will look very choppy a lot of the time. Um, and sometimes those two things are in combination. So like the foot strike and the body won't necessarily match up, but then also the rest of what they're doing is it still feels very choppy. Um, and that has to do um, partially with like 
like hip swing. But I will say that uh, a lot of times the choppiness of just dances in general, um, I'm going to say this, I don't know if it'll make sense to everyone, but people are dancing on top of the floor instead of dancing through the floor. If you understand that, great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the ways that that makes sense to me is the idea of pressing into the floor in order to release yourself from it, as opposed to pulling and picking yourself up off the floor. Yeah. Yeah. And that's part of it. Um, that's not the only reason that that could happen. Um, but that is one pretty frequent reason it does. But when something like that happens in blues music, it looks far more out of place than it does in straight timing. Mm -hmm. And that's because just in general, um, blues music uh, tends to be a lot more smooth like the feeling of the song itself is smooth rather than like certain contemporary songs feel like very upbeat and you know like pop music type you know there's a difference between the two and so you wouldn't notice that as much when it came to dancing to the more upbeat song uh, rather than with the blues you would really notice it quite a bit because mm -hmm. it the song itself is smoother yeah, because like um, co contemporary music, popular music can almost feel like a hammer, like bam, mm -hmm. bam, 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 because it's so regimented and mathematical almost. Whereas because there's such a really fun differentiation in the timing of the rhythm of blues music with swung timing, mm -hmm. it, it, it's like it has waves and it crests and it falls or it strikes and then it dissipates. Right. And that dissipation is what we're dancing to, essentially. Now, another thing that we've talked about before in detail, I would say, uh, is double resistance. Mm -hmm. And that's also a really large piece of um, blues music that it's something that goes hand in hand with that swung timing. And so currently um there's not a lot of dancers that will use double resistance you'll mm -hmm. see it but it's not like that's not the standard i would say um and for blues you can really see especially with uh, most and john like that double resistance mm -hmm. yeah there's double resistance at the end of this underarm turn yeah that we were looking at earlier and because double resistance really lends itself to that kind of pause and then go mm -hmm. and that's one of the almost kind of like rub your belly tap your head kind of things that's going on with a swung timing because you have these two foot strikes that are really close together mm -hmm. um for the and one or and two and three but then you need to slow your follow through for the dissipation after that. So that was the first song. Before we share the link to the second video, which is going to be a fast blue song, I wanna talk about how important it is to make sure that you are sharing the same swung rhythm with your partner when dancing to blues. Mm -hmm. So it's much easier to get away with being slightly on different rhythms with your from your partner to a straight song yeah. but when it's a blues song it breaks everything when you're mm -hmm. slightly off from each other right and that can be one of those conundrums competitively where you have one judge that would rather you be on time yourself and another judge would be like i want you to sacrifice your own timing to be partnered right that's a like a double-edged sword situation. Personally, I prefer to be integrity with what I want my dancing to be. Yeah. Competitively. And then I, if 
if I, for some reason, a judge disagrees with that, that's an opinion difference that I'm okay with existing for the most part. Mm -hmm. But when you go to watch this next song, which is faster between Ben and Melissa, I want you to pay attention to how in sync their same strike and dissipation of the rhythm is as a partnership. Mm -hmm. They're both sharing it. They're not slightly off from each other. And that's one of the things that lends to it being an excellent dance. Mm -hmm. How, ooh, okay, question. On the off chance that you dance with someone who doesn't do swing rhythm to a swung song, how do you bring them along? That's Great a question. really good question. At the most basic level, I would say exaggerating the delayed weight transfer. So your mm -hmm. foot strikes are still on time with the a one, a two, a three, a four, but you can make the delay of your weight transfer over those foot strikes even more delayed. Um, and that can help bring yeah. someone into it with you. Personally, I emphasize um, compression and stretch in my connection. Mm. A lot of times I will make sure that there is very clear um, changing between the two, generally uh, at the end of the slot, but not always. Yeah, just making sure that there's a very clear change between the stretch and the compression. It generally is helpful. So long as you have a partner that is responsive to your connection, generally that's pretty helpful. Um, mm -hmm. Making sure that you're being super clear about what you're doing. And as long as they're pretty reactive, like they will generally go along with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That being said, if you're dancing with someone who still doesn't seem to have the fine body control to vary their timing, I wouldn't worry about it too much. You're yeah. just wanting to let them have a good time and have a successful dance. So it's in those circumstances where I'm like, I'll try to do my best for me, but I'm here to, so they have a good dance. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't stress about it too much until they're competing. Anyways, let me go fetch the link. <laughs> for second song. All right, so for this video, we're watching the second dance in the video. Go ahead and give it a watch. And when you're done, we will get to analyzing. So you can really see in that dance when they're choosing to really emphasize things, they're, they're striking at the same time and dissipating at the same time as a mm -hmm. partnership. That's because they're both basically dancing to the music and because they're both dancing to the music correctly it informs the connection and then they can start that's when you can start reading lines like if you can both hear and dance to the song that you're dancing to yeah that's when you can start reading each other's minds mm -hmm. quite fun yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're the screen to share I think okay. you wanted to talk about this first uh, yeah i did this isn't necessarily a uh a swung timing thing. This is just a basic technique for a send out kind of situation or a side pass. Leaders have a tendency to do this big, like impressive <laughs> sidestep situation, um, but not actually affect their follow in any way, shape or form. So I just wanted to highlight how Ben is mechanically making this happen. So first of all, he's really pitching to his left and taking his body with him. And he's extending his arm a little bit because if he didn't, he would yeet Melissa into the stratosphere. But he's not extending it so much that he's completely leaving her behind. So by the time his foot strikes down here, the center counterpoint has already started moving down the slot. And Melissa is then having to resist that. So that way there's this really great rubber band effect of stretching it very suddenly and then releasing it. And that's what creates that really intense side pass. <laughs> so you can see the handhold moving from Lemery's chair to Alyssa's chair. That movement just from like here to here is what's giving Melissa the information to start moving. And because he's striking, um, like really on top of the music for Melissa to be on time. She has to really uh, sink into that connection and resist it for as long as she can to kind of then launch herself out of the gate. And that's what gives the really amazing rubber band effect. And then the acceleration through the side pass. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to point that out because leaders tend to do the hi -yah! and then the follow feels nothing. <laughs> 
I would just like to point out how uh, Jen, Jess, and Tori are like dying, and everyone else is just like, <laughs> <laughs> <It's> so good. <laughs> so, I actually wanted to talk about Melissa really quickly. So, you can see right now she's standing straight up, but as soon as he kind of starts pulling her into something or starts connecting with her, you can see she softens her knees and sets her hips back and lets her kind of upper body follow with it. And that's kind of the feeling that you want to go for is like that setting back feeling almost. Um, and because uh, this particular dance, like the technique that she's using looks totally different than in the previous dance that we just watched it's because of the uh, speed difference. So because this is fast blues rather than the slow blues, you can see she really needs to make sure that her uh, feet are freed up to move a lot faster. And so that kind of happens by her sitting back and bending the knees some. Yeah, she didn't do that. She mm -mm. was flown. <laughs> Very, very true. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you can really see, um, especially in that uh, stylized anchor that she just did as well. She's still um, really softening the knees and setting back into that quite a bit. Yep, they both are. Mm, yeah. If you go back and watch the other video that we just watched of her, you'll notice that she does not do that very much at all. Um, mm -hmm. She's more upright yeah because she has they have the time in that slower song mm -hmm. to really fully finish movement mm -hmm. um i just wanted to point out the timing for it again um being that swung timing because now we can actually see her feet for this one mm -hmm. and basically the same thing that she did in the other video except for the technique is a little bit different because it's a fast song rather than a slow song so she needs her feet to be freed up um a lot sooner mm -hmm. so we still have that extend short and then like extend again one of the reasons why you see kickball changes so much is because that differentiation in timing, because when you do a kick, that's when you literally have more time before mm -hmm. you have to do your together together really quickly. So um, whereas doing kickball changes to straight time requires more energy because you have to escape the kick faster, yeah. but you have more time to live in a line like that, mm -hmm. just one timing. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about uh, like hitching or delayed ones? <laughs> I do. <laughs> All right. Here, here is a, a good example of a hitch or a delayed one. Hitch timing or delayed one timing is where instead of going one, two, you're either going one, a two. <laughs> Mm -hmm. or one and two you can do a delayed one regardless of the rhythm of the song but it's essentially where you are quickly adding a lot more tension to the connection without traveling on one so it's like let's say you're stretching a rubber band and in order to like launch it it doesn't need to be stretched to max capacity at all you can stretch it to like 90 percent capacity so let's say through five and six, you stretch it and you've got it to 90%. But then on a delayed one, you want to take it to 100% and then release. And so that's what Ben's doing here. So you can see how he's placed his right foot down. Let's pretend what they just did is a six count pattern. So counting is easy for me. As I explained earlier, numbers are hard. So we've got, <laughs> we're pretending this is a six. And one. So he has not actually made a foot strike with his left foot on one. He's instead hitching. So he's sending his body back past his standing leg and increasing the tension here in the handhold while also extending the knee. 
Hitches tend to be where you straighten the leg and leave the foot on the floor. Um, they, they can have a kick to them, but that's technically a kickball change, not a hitch, but it has the same rhythm structure. The one of the pa pattern is here. He's still on his right foot. And then he goes uh, two, left, right, uh, two. And that's a hitch or delayed one. So six and uh, one, uh, two. And not only is that like a really great timing for blues music, but functionally it, it's a really enjoyable way to lead a one. Mm -hmm. Cause it puts just a little bit more tension into the connection that can then uh, release at an accelerated pace. Or if you don't release it, for example, if you're dancing to a real, a much slower song and you do a delayed one, it can encourage the follow to stay in tension through the front half of the next pattern, which is also a really uh, fun connection to play with. Mm -hmm. Aaron said it feels nice and he used multiple eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does, sir. Um, I will say, okay, I'm bird's eye view. Let's say you're a leader. Uh, so bird's eye view head you're facing that direction you've got your feet here and you've got your feet here it's really normal to do your delayed one at an angle so you're yeah. not stepping straight back with your right foot you're not stepping straight to the side you're taking your right foot back and to the side at an angle where people get confused is leaders then still try to have the here, I'm gonna need another color for this. Where's a horrifying pink? There we go. Yeah, horrifying pink. <laughs> if leaders go right here, they have this tendency to still want the line of tension between the partnership to be in this direction. And they still try to lead the follow down here. <laughs> but mm -hmm. if you're going this direction, you need to bring the follow with you in that direction and lead a one at an angle. So that way your uh, left foot would actually come over here instead of being a wide horse step over here. That probably made no sense to some of you, but hopefully it's one of those seeds that'll plant. And then someday in the future, you'd be like, that's what Cassie was talking about. <laughs> and you'll thank me then. Uh, buy me a coffee or something. And I don't drink coffee. Buy me a Thai iced tea or a chai. There we go. I, I want to talk about, so like I was talking about shared rhythm here, they both strike this moment. Yeah. Basically on the same frame. They're, they're moving at the exact same rate together when they strike this moment. And that's what I'm talking about. Like if they had been slightly off, it wouldn't have had the same effect. Correct. Yeah. So, cause they're both stopped here and you can see that Ben starts moving a little bit ahead of Melissa, but like doesn't actually move to the point before her. but she can kind of see his intent, his directional intent. So she's mm -hmm. able to go along with him pretty quickly, like in sync. Oh, I actually, he's doing something even sneakier than that. So if we watch the handhold, the handhold is going at the same rate of their, as their bodies through this mm -hmm. section right here, right? But then he very suddenly accelerates the handhold right there and he moves it down so that way the equal and opposite is up yeah and that's why she hops actually because she's she's feeling that sudden um yeah. movement through her whole body because of the way she's connected into it mm -hmm. and then she just keeps going mm -hmm. and then he does a nice wide prep over here gotta love it 
and goes around her head. So that's another example of that shared timing, how they're both pulsing with the music, the way the music dictates, and they're able to hit those moments perfectly in sync with each other at the same rate. Yeah, and this song in particular, um, the way that they're dancing it, there's more of a, um, an up and down feel than there was in the previous uh, one that we watched with Melissa and John. Mm -hmm. That was very smooth um, and even across. Um, this one has more balance to it. Mm -hmm. All right, this sequence is just bonkers, so we're going to definitely frame through it. <laughs> like Ben's like, I got an idea. <laughs> the musicality will be sick. Just, just you wait. We're gonna do it again. And she catches on like right away that they're gonna like yep. repeat it. Yeah. And so she actually kind of helps him when it gets to these uh little faster. Yeah, because it accelerates. It's like mm -hmm. slow, slow, and then it's like. Wah-bam. Mm -hmm. Wah-bam. Ben's spotting through this to really know where she is is excellent. I'm actually going to go mm -hmm. back a little bit. If um, you watch Ben's, Ben's eyes, pretend he's Batman, <laughs> locked on Melissa, he spots her right here, spots her over his shoulder. And then as they accelerate right here, he really starts whipping his head around faster than the rate of his rotation. Mm -hmm. So he knows exactly where she is. So he's not like chudo chopping her ribs or anything. He's actually able to connect with her in the same spot every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the definition of spotting, except mm -hmm. for he's spotting Melissa instead of where he's going. Object or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you, yeah, if you're spotting where you're going while leading that, your follow might find where you live and kill you later. Uh, that's my won't lesson. be a fun experience. Yeah, no. Or they'll just like abort and be like, "Yeah, I don't trust you right now." <laughs> <laughs> and you'll yeah. be like, "But, but, but, I was doing a cool thing," and I'm like, "You had no idea where I was." <laughs> important things yeah. okay it's that time of night i'm sorry people <laughs> you should know to expect this from me by now oh i love that pistols on my feet I know. styling that she does right there and that's a great example because i was just talking about how there's more kind of an up and down bouncy feel to this song mm -hmm. it's a great example of them working with it because they're not actually like changing their basics to make it more bouncy and match the song. Like the basic technique they're using is the same. It's just like the the styling that they're picking has mm -hmm. more um, height change to it. Yep. Oh, signature over the shoulder free spin to a telemark. Yep. It's so I nice. We love the it. They have. Yeah. Oh, this looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Once more with feeling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a really good, um, this styling that Melissa does right here is a really good example of still dancing to that, that pulse of swung rhythm without mm -hmm. um, tripling with her feet because it has a strike and a dissipation a strike and a dissipation a strike and a dissipation so that the feet are staccato but the follow-through afterwards has that great dissipation to it yeah so um something that it and we did a whole episode on trading places that i'll link 
in the replay. But the faster the song, and blues songs do tend to be faster, trading places can be really helpful. And I talked a little bit about how, in that episode about how to actually accelerate an underarm turn properly. And it involves really, so a follow is connected to you with their right hand, right? And that's the one that's moving across their body. And a lot of leaders tend to accelerate it by just taking it up and over. And to really accelerate a follow properly, you need to exaggerate this across their body. So like when you have more time and you're not accelerating an underarm turn, you don't need to cross their center line as much to get a follow to rotate because you just have more time, it's fine. But when you want to accelerate it, you really need to pop a follow's hand across their center for them to feel the initiation to turn and to not travel while turning. So that way it ends up being more of a trading places turn. And uh, yeah, don't, if you lead a follow this way and they don't turn, and they let go, that's not their fault. <laughs> How do you do that without ripping your arm off sideways? So that's about making sure to maintain the integrity of the space of their frame. So whatever this distance is from the top of their head to their hand, you want to extrapolate that into a circle around their head. And you wanna make sure that you lead around the circumference of that circle and not cut it off super important and the longer their arms the more important that is and then uh this is something i can't teach in this format but i also have a, a sneaky extra little jedi trick that i i use to accelerate underarm turns i just can't teach it in over zoom sorry yeah so, unfortunately unfortunately <laughs> but the time is getting closer that y'all be able to see us in person so hey <laughs> hopefully this was a helpful episode i feel like we did a little bit more in-depth teaching than we usually do i feel like we usually have more of a conversation than yeah a lot of teaching yeah um, hopefully it was helpful i felt like uh going back into the swing of things <laughs> um so proud. <laughs> we needed so to proud. talk about it some more <laughs> And um, if this is your first time seeing us talk music theory, which was Alicia's specialty, and then seeing um, an animation from me, we do that every month inside of our Patreon. Go ahead and check that out if you're interested. Basically, we cover a technique topic each month, and then we do a video analysis like we do here live every Thursday. But then we do music analysis from that video. It's a grand old time. We are yep. nerds. And my animations for those are layered. So it's not just the rhythm of the song. It's also the, the vocals and the other instruments. So there are a lot more rings on the animation Patreon. Cool. Well, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. I think next week we are, oh yeah, we are going to be just analyzing a good old Robert Royston and Deborah Seke video. So that's going to be fun. Not a particular topic, just framing through a really good dance and talking about it. Exactly. Well, Thank you everyone for joining us and uh, we hopefully we'll see you next week for looking at Robert and Deborah. Woohoo. Bye. Oh, so, oh, you missed a joke there. Back into the swing of things. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll shut up now. <laughs> Maybe I'm, like intentionally not saying it that way. <laughs> you cannot escape me and my bad jokes. They will find me. It's your turn to do the doodle do. <laughs> I don't if think so. Choose. Do one. You want me That's to do it? Yours. <laughs> Caveat for those of you here live, we had a small electrical hassle yesterday. So my homegrown render farm for Blender didn't get to finish the whole render. <laughs> Aaron, you jinxed me. I swear. I swear when you talked to me about that last night. I hadn't logged out of our YouTube account and I got attacked with ads. <laughs> Such a, a fun entrance to this song. I love uh -huh. how she pulls the first one. She's like, I'm not actually gonna kill you. <laughs> and then she's like, oh, 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 he dodged. Let's do this again. <laughs> I love Jen's reaction in the background I too. Know. She's so excited. Yes. <laughs> 
I remember once um, Ben Morris dipped me and I did the the, sh the signature Chantel like kick with my free leg, but I am much more limmy than Chantel. Uh, and apparently the audience all gasped because I like came this close to murdering Ben Morris with my knee. Um, <laughs> anyways. I don't think I had ever watched what Ben actually does here yeah. until I video earlier today <laughs> touch the floor so dramatic you, you, you earn points if you touch the floor i think it says something about dying so that's his version of dying apparently yeah very dramatic. <laughs> i'm gonna go back to the green because that's a really violent pink okay uh. is the green that much better though i mean it's it's easy to see that's why i use it I just, me and Pink, we, we are not we friends. We're not friends. Yes. That's, that's <laughs> exactly what I was trying to say, but I could not go up the words. <laughs> Whip your hair back and forth. Whip your hair back and forth. You got this, Ben. Or give yourself whiplash if you're Ben. <laughs> exactly. 